Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hey Coach Tony. I'm your host, Tony Fiorino. As you know, each week here on Hey Coach Tony, we uh, we tackle the hottest topics in youth sports. And as always, we want to hear what you guys have to say. So we've opened up the studio lines at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. I uh, want to remind you, as always, throughout the winter, that our good friends at Catamount Ski Area in the nearby Berkshires have agreed to give free passes to some of our best callers and emailers. So whether you're listening in the car, at home, or even online at heycoachtony.com, Make sure you chime in if something's on your mind. 855 Hey Coach is the number, and let's see if we can get you some free passes to Catamount. All right, uh, before we begin the show this week, uh, Adam and I are both um, compelled to tell you that you're going to hear noises going on in the background. Apparently, there is a flock of day laborers on the roof of the studio doing God knows what, but the noises are uh, loud and frequent. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess the management figured, hey, we got work to do on the studio. When do you think we should do it? I got it. How about from 9 to 10 on Saturday when Coach Tony's got to get on the air? Well, anyway, we're going to deal with it as best we can, and we will take your calls at 855-HEY-COACH. But I want to start things off with a riddle. I got a riddle for you guys this week. Here it is. What's the only thing that's worse than an annoying, whining sports parent who complains about something really stupid? Give up? I'll tell you. An annoying, whiny sports parent who complains about something really stupid and then gets their way. Remember, uh, I think it was just two, three weeks ago we talked about the town of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. Remember the rec department tried to uh, institute a silent Sunday in their town? Remember a woman with no brain named Linda Pendley thought silent Sundays was unconstitutional and a viola- uh, violation of her freedom of speech? Remember how I told you that uh, if there was a single brain on the city council, it would never prevail and the town would have its silent Sunday? Well, guess what? I was contacted by the same local paper who first broke that story, as well as a nice lady named Allison Humphrey, who is on the rec uh, rec board, who informed me that although the rec department voted unanimously 5-0 to to proceed with this silent Sunday, the city council of Pauls Valley, Oklahoma, did not disappoint me. Just when you think you can make... A bold statement like I did, these mongos chose to support Linda Pendley and forbid any further Silent Sundays. Now, thankfully, the people in the town have more brains than the city council, so these able-minded people decided to go ahead and do the Silent Sunday on their own. And for those who participated and emailed me, they told me it was an enormous success. Uh, And uh, as to Linda Pendley, I'm sure she was flapping her gums and stretching her pie hole Uh, to her heart's content during that same game, and illustrating exactly why Silent Sunday exists. It's to keep idiots like you, Linda Pendley, from ruining youth sports events. Well, I don't want to dwell on this one for the whole show. I just wanted to give you guys an update on a show that we had already done. Uh, All right, well, listen, this week I want to have a little fun, because right after the show, pretty much, I'm headed off to a ski week with the family. So you got to try to contain your sadness when I explain that I am not going to be on the air next week, I'm going to be on the slopes with my family. So like I said, I want to have a little fun this week. I was, uh, I was joking around during the week with a couple of my buddies. And we started talking about some of the things that we really could do without in youth sports. And while we were primarily being satirical about this, um, a few things after a couple of beers, a few things started to pop into this discussion that actually made some sense and are probably worth evaluating. Think about it. Aren't there things in youth sports that we could honestly do without? Actually, there are plenty. But I try to break these things down into two primary groups. And I want you guys to chime in on this one as well. 855-HEY-COACH, 855-439-2622. The first group of things we can do without in youth sports is what I call the empty gestures. You know, these are the things that we do or say or experience or give out or what have you uh, that really have nothing to do with anything. It, you know, they are a true waste of time. Now, the second group is what I call youth, uh, useless people and useless roles in youth sports. Again, we had some fun talking about all the, these losers that we can do without in the youth sports equation. But after a while, like I said, maybe because we had a couple of beers in us, um, we began making legitimate arguments about how we might be able to do away with some of these people. And the fact is, if we did, things would only get better. 
Well, I got a couple of good responses on the Facebook page as well as on my email, but uh, I really don't want to hog this this particular segment. So again, uh, if you've got some ideas of some empty gestures in youth sports or what I call the empty suits in youth sports as well, give us a call in the studio at 855-HEY-COACH. It's 855-439-2622. Best ones uh, are going to get lift tickets to Catamount, so call the studio. Uh, By the way, if you hear something you don't agree with, Call in and make an argument. You still might get the lift tickets, all right? All right, so while, while we're waiting for your calls <clears throat> and your emails, I'm... Stop! Oh, my God. <laughs> my God. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> oh, come on. Doesn't matter. All right, anyway. All right, while we're waiting for your calls, I'm going to get into some of my favorite stuff here. Um, I'm going to start with the one that I've talked about many, many times, and, and that is... The post-game handshake. Uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I understand why we do it. I know why we do it. I appreciate why we do it. But let's face it. We're at a point now in youth sports where, unfortunately, it's getting to the point where there's more risk of something going wrong in that handshake line than there is reward of sportsmanship by forcing the kids to do it. Um, If you listen to the show in the past, you know that we've heard everything from uh, a football player putting thumbtacks in his gloves so that he can uh, he could injure the other team. We've heard of kids spitting in their hands before shaking hands. And uh, we even heard of a college football player blatantly attacking an opponent after the game in the handshake line. Um, the way I see it, I think we should teach our kids to respect the game and to respect their opponent uh, and I mean those opponents that deserve it and, 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 and seek out the players on the other team that they really do respect and to offer congratulations to those players rather than force them to shake hands. Uh, I can tell you I coach 7th grade and 5th grade girls travel basketball. And I got to tell you, even at this young age, you know how many different players I've seen go through the handshake line and, per- and purposely not shake hands? Remember, these are fifth-grade girls, and I find myself muttering under my breath, you little pig, what the heck are you going to turn into when you grow up? Now, at the same time, I can and I do remember specific girls who exemplified sportsmanship and solid play, and those are the girls that I made a point to take to the side after the game, even after the handshake line, and tell them how great I thought they were. And these are the same players that I hear my own kids talk about on the ride home. You probably experienced the same thing. They say something like, wow, number 38 and number 5, they were really, really good. And you know what? They were so nice. Now, granted, these are girls saying this. But that's what the real, that's what the handshake line is really intended to promote. But unfortunately, um, with all the best of intentions, whenever you force it to happen, nothing good really comes out of it. Even if there's no, even if there are no incidents on the handshake line. Think about it. When you force the kids to do it, does it really have any meaning at all? really doesn't. So that one's the top of my list of empty gestures is the handshake line. I don't know what's the top of your list, but, you know, give me a call. Let me know. It's 855-HEY-COACH. It's 855-439-2622. <clears throat> um, I do want to – yeah, yeah, I know. I got a couple of emails here and, and a couple of things that were up on the Facebook page that I want to address. Uh, one of them – came in from uh, our buddy, I say our buddy, everyone, if I say you're my buddy, it means I probably don't know you, but he, we got one from Harry in Pleasantville, New York, who, uh, who put it up on the Facebook page, the uh, Facebook page, by the way, is www.heycoachtony.com, Harry wrote in and said, uh, for girls, it's the post-game cheer for the other team, <clears throat> that sounds like a simple statement, but, uh, and for those of you who don't have girls, let's just say that um, the chatter during the course of a game <clears throat> is a lot different in a girls' game than a boys' game. Plain and simple. Doesn't mean that one gender is better than the other. Doesn't mean you know one's more obnoxious. It's, it's just it's just different. Plain and simple. And Harry, if you're listening, dude, I I feel your pain. Um, I don't know if Harry, if you've ever been to a girls' softball game, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, but both my girls play softball. At the younger ages, it is best described as 
that was was that like an old sound? <laughs> it's like an old like flute whistle from like the fifties. I got sound effects this week, Adam. Isn't it great? <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> oh my god! I... All right, well, listen. At the younger ages, these these softball games can best be described as I, I'll just say agony, and it is. It is. These little girls have a cheer for everything, everything from from a strike to a ball to a hit to an error to a walk to an someone gets their their first training bra i mean you name it i mean shoot me please uh, i i can't describe enough the 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 distaste that i have for the endless chants and songs and dances my god if there are any softball coaches listening to the show this morning i beg you beg you please set the example and outlaw these cheers these songs and these dances it, 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 it's, it's, it's agonizing. And, and another one, by the way, another one, <laughs> some of the softball parents are probably going through this right now and screaming at their radios uh, because there's something else that is an empty gesture at these games, especially the softball games, because it doesn't happen anywhere else. And some of you are going to laugh, some of you are going to cry, some of you are going to get mad at me. But anyway, at the younger ages, please, coaches, please, 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 um, after we spend two hours watching walk after walk after walk in these young girls' games, and we're ready to go home. Can you please stop having the relay races at the end of the game? Would that, would that be asking too much? See, Adam doesn't know what I'm talking about, but softball parents everywhere are doubled over vomiting all over their houses right now or in their cars. Um, <laughs> I swear, it, would it be too much not to have the races? But I t you know what? I tell you what. If you're going to have the races, do me a favor. Please put metal spikes on the girls – and please lay my head on home plate. Just kill me. Just kill me. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm hogging up the stuff here, but I, I want to get to some of your calls here. Uh, uh, Adam tells me we got Steve calling in from East Lansing, Michigan, who is online too. So we're going to go to Steve. Hey, Steve, good morning. You're on Hey Coach Tony. How are we doing? Hey, Tony, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Uh, I could not be better, man. What do you got for me? Hey, listen, I love the topic you opened the show with with the post-game handshake. <laughs> I'm totally in agreement with you. I think they should do away with them. They, they, they make no sense at all. And I'll tell you why, Tony. Every single game when we play, whether we win or lose, every time we get online and we shake hands with the other team, I never hear one word from any of the players until I meet with the coach at the end. He says, good game, coach. And, and I'm just, I, I don't see anything for it. So I don't see any value of it. Like you said, do what they do in the NBA. Like the coaches point to each other after the game. They say, take care. Or the players seek out the guys that they really want to congratulate. And they shake hands and they hug. And everybody goes on their own way. I, I couldn't agree more. Now, granted, I don't know what's worse, not hearing the kids say anything or just hearing it's like when you leave a plane and you hear the stewardess. Good game, good yeah, game, and, good game, and, and, good, and good Tony, game. And you know what game. else? They, they, they give such the I mean they don't even they don't even shake your hand they just put their hand out and it's laying there and it's almost like Tony you know what else we do here in Michigan which it's kind of connected to that before the game when they announce the starting five for each team mm -hmm. each player runs over and shakes the opposing coach's hand yep and and I'm totally against that too I would rather just a kid be announced run out to the foul line. And, and just go back to your bench and start the game. I, I, I'm not in favor of shaking people's hands before games. Uh, you know what we do? We have our we do have our girls go shake the hands of the referees. And again, these are tiny little fifth grade girls. I know you're a high school coach in East Lansing, but the young girls. Uh, granted, you want to give them some guidance to sportsmanship, but like I said, um, when I hear my own kids say that girl played great and she was really nice. That's the, then go shake her hand. Go tell her right. she played great. Go tell her that not only are you a good player, but like you're, it's fun to compete against you because that's what sportsmanship is really about. It's not eliminating competition. It's not everybody wins. It's respecting your opponent, but the, the opponents that earn that respect. Right. Hey, Tony, I, I gotta, I'm, I'm a big guy when it comes to quotes. I've been collecting quotes for over 30 years. I got notebooks filled with them. I read something from Bill Parcells one time, and this kind of touches on the, the whole scope of your show. Bill Parcells, they were comparing athletes from the 70s and athletes today, and Parcells hit me with this. He said, the athletes today haven't changed. It's the people around them that have changed. <laughs> and, and if you really think about that, you know, with these posses and these, these uh, crews that these athletes run with these days, and the people they hang out with, and even the parents. The parents are so different. I know you talk about it a lot. 
I talk to some of my youth coaches when I was younger, and, and some of these guys back in, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and, and I say to the coach, I say, hey, coach, did you ever have any parents come up to you after games, after you won a game, and complain about their kids' playing time? And he looked at me, he goes, are you kidding me? He goes, the parents <laughs> always knew never to talk about the kids' playing time. Where today, Tony, it's just the opposite. It's, it's the biggest problem in youth sports, Steve. And I got to tell you, dude, have you ever called the show before? No, first time. Dude, you got to call again. I, I love the way, and by the way, a fellow Brooklyn boy, dude, I was born in Bay Ridge. So I don't know how we both moved so far away from Brooklyn, but in any event, great call. I'm so glad you, uh, you enjoyed the show, man. Say hi to everybody in East Lansing for us, and please call back in again, man. I, we got to get to a hey, break. Hey, listen, so. be careful on those slopes, okay? <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. All right, listen, when we get back, we're going to get a couple more of your emails, a couple more of the Facebook posts. And again, we're talking about these empty gestures in youth sports, and a little later, we're talking about these empty suits, the people we can do without you're listening to hey coach tony stick around i'll be right back coach tony hey welcome back everybody you're with hey coach tony on this uh lovely saturday morning it's lovely because it's the saturday morning before i go away for vacation with my family dude how how cool is it that we got a guy from east lansing michigan calling in i hope espn detroit is listening more importantly you know who i mo davenport who runs espn radio hope you're listening i'm on this tiny little station in connecticut in east lansing Represent. All right, listen, uh, we're talking about the whole notion of empty gestures in youth sports and empty suits, or meaning the people we can do without in youth sports. And, uh, you know, Steve from East Lansing and I were talking about the handshake uh, line after the game. <clears throat> that was my pet peeve. We also talked about the, um, <laughs> the never ending high school musical that is girls' softball. Anyway, um, something else that was up on the Facebook page that I wanted to address came in from our friend, and at this time it's our friend, not our buddy, which means I know her, Megan from Colorado, also representing. We're moving further and further west. All right, anyway, Megan wrote on the Facebook page, depending on the age of the kids, I would have to say the emptiest gesture is the trophies for everyone campaign. Even 9- and 10-year-olds know how hollow a 7th place medal is. Um, Megan, well said. Amen. <laughs> I mean, listen, everyone knows I love making jokes and I love to exaggerate and that's just kind of what I do. But, you know, and in all honesty, you know, I, I got to be I got to shoot straight with you. My kids are at an age and a level of athletics where I really I, I truly enjoy watching them play. I mean, I really love it. But there was a time when things were indeed rough. Uh, in fact, you know what, Megan, you want to complain about a seventh place medal? <laughs> then you've obviously never been to a kids gymnastics competition. <laughs> it is it's bad enough that these competitions take four hours to complete but when it's done or at least when you think it's done you get to the dreaded medal ceremony the, the heralded medal ceremony and, and right now gymnastics parents again right after the softball parents they're all vomiting in their cars because some of you guys are on your way to one of those gymnastics competitions right now and you know <laughs> that that little sigh of relief that you have when the last gymnast finishes her floor routine and you've heard that same god-awful song 7,000 times in the row over the course of four hours, you know that you're not going home for another hour at best. Because not only do they reward everybody, they break them into different uh, 17, 18 different age categories. <laughs> you know, it's like you see this six-year-old who pays 150 bucks for a leotard so she can go out and do three somersaults. And then the announcer's like, with a 7.35 on floor, let's hear it for our 19th place winner, Cody. Woohoo! Go, Cody! You go, girl! The only good news about these competitions is that the larger ones, the larger ones actually have, and I've been to some in Florida and out of state, they, they have metal detectors. Now, why is that good news? Because if they didn't, I would have eaten a bullet years ago, along with about 10,000 other dads. <laughs> Didn't I tell you it was going to be fun this morning? All right. Well, listen, if you've got a good one for us, please, uh, I want to hear some more of what you guys have to say. So if you have any ideas of useless gestures or useless adults, give us a call here in the studio at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. Um, if anyone is wondering, I offered to give Steve from East Lansing his lift tickets to Catamount. But apparently the drive is a little too much for Steve. But we have a couple more to give out. A um, couple of emails came in during the week, and some of them were pretty good. In fact, one of our friends uh, – no, actually, this is one of our buddies. <laughs> Kevin and Shelton wrote in to me during the week. said, hey, Coach Tony, right up there 
with uh, participation awards, which is what Megan from Colorado was talking about. Right up there with participation awards is clapping when a swimmer who is minutes behind in a long race or 30 seconds behind in a short race finally finishes. <clears throat> Are they clapping because the swimmer finished or just to make him or her feel good? This is kind of embarrassing to a swimmer who now knows that everyone watched him or her struggle in the race. Well, Kevin, thank you for that. Uh, th thanks for the email. Uh, and, and you know what's funny? I got another one that's kind of similar. Um, somebody wrote in about watching a cross-country track event and clapping when the last runner finishes after the sun's already gone down. So, listen, I, I'm not a big swim fan. And, and by the way, I don't want to upset anybody. It's not because I don't like it. In fact, I think that you know swimming is clearly one of the best ways – for, for all athletes to train. Uh, I, I just really never knew any competitive swimmers. But I can certainly understand what you're saying. I mean, think about it. Uh, swimming meets have to take a long time, too, right? I mean, they must, they must take forever. And if you're in the, you know, 7,000-meter <laughs> medley and some kid, you know, is, 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 is dragging behind, if it was me, I'd be yelling from the stands, you know, come on, kid, either drown or finish, will you? I mean, this is, <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> all right, well, listen, um, 855, hey, coach, is the number in the studio, and uh, I want to get to some of your thoughts on this. So, like I said, uh, <laughs> give me a call and let me know what you think. Um, uh, I got, by the way, I'm sorry, I did get another, I got another email, and this one is actually pretty good. <clears throat> this one I'm not going to tear to shreds. It comes from our friend um, Joe from Brookfield. Joe wrote, uh, Joe wrote in and said, hey, coach, Tony, the game ball can be very bad when the coach feels he has to give one to everybody by year's end. Well, Joe, that's a good one, and I almost forgot that one. Um, and the reason is because I don't give out a game ball. Never do. Kid hits a home run, I'll let them keep the ball when they're younger. But I don't give out a game ball, and it's for this very reason. Um, you nailed it. I think the game ball, which, by the way, like a lot of these empty gestures, um, could really be a good thing. And at one point, probably was a really good thing. Unfortunately, though, like everything else in youth sports, um, when something starts to make sense and benefit the kids – Someone had to probably at some point step in and make it an everybody wins campaign. The game ball when I was a kid, and I'm sure some of you feel the same way, the game ball for me was a highly coveted token for an exceptional effort that a kid put forth in a baseball game. And I say baseball because they don't give out footballs or tennis balls. Or maybe I'm wrong. But in any event, for me it was baseball. This was something that you earned, and you had to go really above it. A game ball wasn't given out every game. It was for an exceptional effort on the, on the part of a kid during a game. Now, I don't mind saying this, and you now my brother John's going to call in and give me some grief, but I received plenty of game balls throughout my Little League career. And you know what? Each and every one of them that I got, I would write on that ball what I did, the date, the score, and I kept it like it was a trophy because guess what? It was. It was those were the most meaningful trophies that I had. In fact, I'd probably still have all of them, and I wish I did, except for the fact that eventually, you know, growing up <laughs> where I grew up, um, the kids in the neighborhood would inevitably run out of regular baseballs. And if we wanted to play a game, each of us at some point would have to go get our game ball. <laughs> and we had to use them out of necessity. So uh, while that's just one more for my, uh, my therapist to hear from me while I'm laying on his couch, um, uh, my point is this. Game ball used to mean something. Now it's an empty gesture. It's simply something that eventually every kid gets so again, like everything else, I shouldn't say everything else, like many other things in youth sports, it's lost its meaning and it's lost its value. If the game ball is going to have such little meaning and, you're, and your goal is going to be to devalue it so much that everybody's going to get one before the season is over, it, listen up, coach, turn up your radio. If that's your goal, just give each kid a ball at the start of the season. Get it out of the way. This way you won't forget one. Or better yet, you know what you do? Just give them seven, eight bucks and tell them to go buy their own. Because you know what? At that point, the game ball doesn't really mean much more than that. It just, it just doesn't. Joe from uh, Brookfield, great call, uh, great email. That, that is actually one of, the, one of the ones I really am glad that I addressed. Um, <laughs> by the way, you know, I, I really don't get to talk about swimming enough, and, and I made myself laugh um, with that drown or finish thing. <laughs> so, so Kevin from Shelton, uh, you got yourself a free lift ticket to Catamount. <laughs> And, and don't worry, everybody. Like I said, I couldn't give one to Steve from Lansing. So I got another I got another one or two lift tickets that I'll give away. So you can call me at 855-HEY-COACH. It's 855-439-2622. We're going to have to go to a little bit of a break here. But before we do, 
Uh, I do want to remind you all that we at the Hey Coach Tony Show are incredibly proud <clears throat> to announce that this year we're working with the Boomer Esiason Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and we're sponsoring a runner in the New York City Half Marathon for 2012. Several of the uh, supporters and sponsors of the show have stepped up uh, to help us. And you know what? They didn't ask for anything, but I, I agreed that in return for their support, I want to give them some well-deserved recognition. So if, if you want to help us with a small donation, just email me for more information at heycoachtony at gmail.com. Uh, after each uh, week, I try to remember to put the, the link up on the Facebook page so you can go and donate your money, whether it's a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars or, uh, boy, you know, some family that still has yet to uh, identify themselves donated 50 bucks. To, uh, to our runner. Um, so, listen, we want to say thanks to our friends at SportsSignUp.com. If you need to automate your league from collections to uh, officials to registration and everything in between, go to www.SportsSignUp.com. Remember, if you're in the Riverside section of Greenwich uh, or if you're just in the mood for great Italian and you should get your butt over to the Riverside section of Greenwich, you look no further than Pomodoro Restaurant. Um, when you go in there, you say hi to the owner, Mark. And, uh, and tell them Coach Tony sent you. We also want to give uh, a big thank you to our friends at the Outdoor Sports Center of Wilton, Connecticut, who have just been outfitting people for biking and snowshoeing and skiing, uh, uh, kayaking for, for decades. It's a great family business. And uh, also want to say thanks to Patsy's Pizza on Route 202 in Somers, uh, who also chimed in and, and helped us out with the uh, fundraising um, and, of course, it, it just wouldn't be winter without uh, these amazing people at Catamount Ski Area chipping in and, and being very generous. Located in the Berkshires, Catamount equals winter skiing fun for the whole family. Again, you want to learn more how, about how you can help us sponsoring our runner, just uh, email me at heycoachtony at gmail.com. Give what you can. Uh, and, by the way, I forgot to mention, yeah, the, the runner this year is Mrs. Hey Coach Tony. So she's putting her... Her uh, <laughs> her body on the line, beating the garbage out of herself. Matter of fact, she's probably running right now getting ready. We love you, and uh, you're doing a great thing, sweetheart, for the uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. You should do the same. Give what you can, guys. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Hey Coach Tony on ESPN Radio. I want to remind you guys that... Um, <laughs> Soon, I'm stopping. I'm gonna stop giving out the date, but pretty soon you're gonna be watching Hey Coach Tony on CPTV Sports uh, throughout the state of Connecticut. Uh, that's a scary thought. By the way, during the break, Adam reminded me that the drilling and the hammering had stopped, which means that probably in about three seconds, Adam Jinxit is gonna start up again. But hey, we're talking this morning about empty gestures <clears throat> and empty suits in youth sports, and there are plenty to go around. If you have something you want to add to the show, by all means, give me a call at eight five five Hey Coach. That's 855-439-2622 because, quite frankly, with regard to the empty gestures, uh, I'm running on empty. Uh, so if you got one, give me a call. But uh, at this point, I want to move on and talk about these. Uh, you know, we're going to move from empty gestures to empty suits. These are some of the people and or general roles uh, that we can certainly do without in youth sports. Like I said, if you got one, give me a call. Let's see if we can get you some ski tickets. But uh, we got a few ones, uh, a few good ones during the week. So I'm going to jump right into it. First one came to me on email from Steve in Wallingford, who, uh, who writes, uh, writes in and says, Hey, Coach Tony, do you think maybe we can do without the slappy-go-lucky high school sports reporters? I'm personally not quite sure if all the exposure high school kids are getting now is really a good thing. I personally could do without them, but what do you think? All right, well, Steve, thanks for the email. And uh, I got to tell you, I might have to tread lightly on this one because, well, first of all, a lot of these guys are friends of the show, <clears throat> and they send us stories <laughs> that I use on the air. So it's tough for me to say that we can do without them. Uh, second, guess what? Because of the way the show is going so far, and I'm very grateful that it is, uh, I've had some people ask me to maybe take on a role like that. So i got to be careful. Uh, if I say that you know Sparky McDougal, the beat reporter for Staples High School, is a real loser and has no life, and then I wind up taking over a spot, it ain't going to look too good, now is it? All right. Now, having said that, I completely understand what you're saying. Uh, in fact, there was an article up on the Facebook page. Again, the Facebook page is heycoachtony.com. There was an article I put up there on this very point. If you didn't see it, you should go check it out because it's a good read, and it touches on some of the points that you just brought up. If we, uh, In fact, if we have time later, I might even go through the article. So uh, it's indeed a great point, and maybe we'll dig on it, uh, dig in on it a little bit later, but at least... Uh, until I know what my next gig is going to be, 
in uh, in journalism. I'm going to reserve judgment on the uh, on the high school sports reporters. Uh, you know a person or a role that just plain old don't make sense? Give us a call. Let us know what you think. Because uh, this next one, uh, I like. <laughs> this one comes in from Larry in New Milford. He writes in and says, hey, Coach Tony, what do you make of the guys who are in charge of the booster club or the touchdown club? I think it's a, I think it's great that they raise money, but it seems that they take themselves a little too seriously. Um, you know, Larry, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, again, like most of what we're talking about today, these roles were all created and, and for the right reasons. But think about it. All it takes is one guy in this role. Let's just you know pick on the president of the touchdown club. All it takes is one guy, one year, to overstep his boundaries just a little bit. And then guess what? The bar has now been raised. And so the next guy saw that Bob overstepped his bounds a little bit. So the next guy oversteps it a little further. And so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, and it's gotten to the point where it's out of control because <clears throat> I personally find it amusing when I go to a game, and I go to a couple of games. I like to, you know, get some hands-on research. I'll go to a game, and again, I'll keep picking on the touchdown club guy. It, 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 I find it amusing when I go to these games and I see the president of the touchdown club standing on the sidelines next to the team as if, you know, he's got some authority on this team, like you know, like a coach, or, or or even better, it comes across as if he's got a more prominent place than the rest of the parents. Hey, guy, guess what? Most of that money that you raise, you know where it's coming from? It's coming out of our pockets. So I tell you what, either give me a spot on that sideline, or get your butt up here in the stands with the rest of us commoners. So Larry, Larry New Milford, that's that, you know, it's a great point. And I think it just goes back to that sense of entitlement. That you know, If you want to really put one word or one concept out there as the detractor in all of youth sports, it is a sense of entitlement. <clears throat> just because you raise some money help us, helping us sell candy bars and charge me five bucks for a cup of coffee uh, on a hot Friday night <laughs> at, the, at the football game doesn't make you any better than any of the other parents. doesn't give you any you know, preferential treatments. If you're doing it, do it because you want to do it. Matter of fact, on that point, um, here's a person I never thought I would hear mentioned as someone we could do without. And at first I was a little taken back. How's this one? The team mom. Someone actually emailed me and said, hey, Coach Tony, we can do without the team mom. Now, any, any of the moms care to chime in on this one? I really hope so. If you do, call me at 855-HEY-COACH. It's 855-439-2622. Uh, on this one, I really hope we get someone calling in. Because, again, when I first heard this one, I was taken back. By the way, uh, while we're waiting for your calls, uh, I do want to remind you that next week I am not – we will not be on the air. <clears throat> the guys uh, – uh, I'm on vacation, and, and the guys here at the station are, are never going to spend a buck to put together a, a Best of Hey Coach Tony show <laughs> to fill in. So we're probably just going to go with either uh, you know some regular ESPN programming next week. Um, so guess what? If you, if you just can't get enough of Darian Mel – well, next week your prayers are going to be answered while I'm skiing in Vermont. <laughs> um, you know, by the way, depending on when I leave, I may actually make a stop at Catamount. I, I, I just can't say enough about that place. It's so close. Sometimes it's a great little stop off to get in a couple of hours of skiing before you make the, uh, the rest of that trek to Vermont. Anyway, um, I was hoping I was going to get at least one person to get their feathers ruffled up and call in um, and defend this team mom before I talk about it. Um, and why we don't need her anymore, but I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry this ball myself. If you want to call in, I'll still take your calls, but let me start by saying that many team moms are an invaluable uh, and an, 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 an incredible resource for the teams. They can and usually do perform many tasks uh, for the team and for the coaches, and in some cases they just do things that other parents should but just don't want to do. However, and I got this from more than just a few folks on email this week. Sometimes this title of team mom becomes a badge of honor. And some of these, you know, soccer mom Nazis, they really start to delude themselves into thinking that this role is more than it really is. Like I said, I got a few emails talking about the team mom who thinks she, uh, not, not dissimilar to the, uh, the president of the touchdown club, thinks that she plays more of a role. And so for some reason, thinks that maybe she has some sort of authority over the other parents or thinks it's her job to ensure there's proper behavior on the sidelines or in some cases, you know, stands right up next to the coaches during the team meetings and starts, starts fielding questions. 
<laughs> I mean, this, this can easily turn into animosity, um, especially among the parents. And so I'll tell you this. If you're a team mom and you genuinely care about the kids and making sure they have what they need, I think that's great. But if you're the team mom who thinks that she's a coach in the wings and, and tries to exercise attitude, arrogance, and authority over any of the other parents, do me a favor, team mom. Turn up your radio right now because I've got some really solid advice for you. If you're that team mom, make sure the kids have their juice boxes and shut up. Stop talking to the other parents in that tone because you know what? They all, they've all emailed me and they all hate you. Don't know how else to say that one. <laughs> All right, listen, um, you know, Adam, I want to go to a quick, I'm going to go to an early break if it's okay with you because I, I want to touch on a, there are two comparisons I want to try to do this week. Uh, I am going to give us, uh, people all week were talking about comparing Jeremy Lin, the New York Knicks sensation, to Tim Tebow. So Lin mania is being compared to Tebow mania, and I'm going to hit that when we get back. And also, uh, I'm going to compare two people you've never heard compared before, Gary Carter and Whitney Houston. So you're not going to want to miss this. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. That is, except for next week. We are on vacation next week. If you uh, happen to happen to be skiing anywhere in Vermont, because I'm making like a three mountain tour, you see somebody with a big nose and a great big obnoxious jacket that looks like a Steelers jacket. <laughs> it's me. Tap me on the shoulder and say hi. All right, listen. Uh, it would. I, I can't go through this week without addressing. What has become an absolute sensation, not just in the Northeast, but all across the country in the NBA. I'm talking, of course, about Jeremy Lin. A lot of people are making comparisons to Jeremy Lin and Tim Tebow. And I got to tell you, I'm not making a whole lot of comparisons. I'm really not. Um, reason is, Jeremy Lin has not been polarizing at all. You know, Tebow is a humble guy, but there was this whole religion piece, and um, you know, there, there was more of a, a conflict. And the other thing is, Tim Tebow had a, a, a fanfare high school career, a heralded college career. When he got drafted, everybody knew what was going on. He was one of the most highlighted guys during the draft. Jeremy Lin, on the other hand, wasn't a highly recruited high school player. He was good, obviously. Uh, he didn't go to a basketball powerhouse that's you know in the Final Four every year. The guy went to Harvard. And, you know, undrafted, cut twice. I mean, this is, this, this is a true Cinderella story. <clears throat> now... Can we still learn something from Jeremy Lin? Absolutely. And I think it's one of the most valuable lessons in the history of youth sports. It's become a cliche, but one that we never see come true. It's a cliche, but this one finally hit. What's the message here, guys? The message we tell all our kids. Instead of complaining about playing time, guys, let's point to Jeremy Lin and tell our kids this one. Teach your kids this one. Always be prepared. Never give up. Because you know what? You never know when you're going to get your chance. And when you do, boy, you better just grab it by the short hairs and make the most of it. Because that's exactly what this kid did. Now, okay, yeah, they lost. He had a less than great game. So does everybody else. Did anyone really think Jeremy Lin was going to light it up every single night and that the Knicks were never going to lose another game? Come on. Come on. Seriously, give, give me a break. The guy's doing an amazing job. And quite frankly... What I think is uh, the true asset to any point guard is how he is going to produce and perform when all the tools are back. Camilo, you know, let's watch what happens after a couple of weeks with Camilo Anthony, Amari Stoudemire, uh, a three-point shooter in the mix. And I bet this kid's going to do a great job as, as, as an NBA point guard. Uh, man, seriously, you want to look up – you want to talk Cinderella story? You really got to look no further because Jeremy Lin is what youth sports is all about. I mean, you have any idea what the odds are against a guy finally getting his shot in this fashion and performing the way he has? <clears throat> then go figure the odds of an NBA player being as humble and selfless as this guy is. I mean, he has been this uh, a poster child. You do you work the odds on those, and you're going to come up with something like a billion to one. Like I said, I don't know how much longer he's going to play the way he is or if he's going to continue to play at all. Or how it's going to change when he's got all these tools back. But I'm rooting for him. And I mean big time. Because I don't know if you agree or disagree. 855-HEY-COACH is the number. But this, this kid is exactly what the NBA needed. Not just what the Knicks needed. And I'm not, I, I hate the NBA. I'll say it. I, I, if the whole NBA disappeared tomorrow, my life would be no different. But this is exactly what they needed. And I tell you what, they really better take advantage of it. 
while it lasts because there are far too few really good feel-good stories in the NBA. Jeremy Lin, take a bow. Take a bow. You know what? I'm going to walk you through something real quick. I saw an article. Five things you probably don't know about Jeremy Lin. I'll walk through them real quick. Number one, Lin scored 17 points in Palo Alto High's 51-47 to State Division II basketball championship game in uh, March of 2006 against Modern Day, which was ranked at the time number 11 by USA Today. And even then, he had a flair for the dramatic. With Palo Alto holding just a 44-42 to lead, Lynn made a desperation three-pointer with the shot clock at about zero and only two minutes left in the fourth quarter. In fact, his high school coach was recently quoted as saying, when we won the state championship, we went back to the high school, and he was like, that was great, but did you see what the robotics club just did? <laughs> now, they're, they're, I giggle. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm fighting back the Asian guy, math guy, robotics guy. I'm fighting it back. I'm not going to do it. All right, another one. Lynn was the editor of his high school newspaper. And during this run, he wrote, and I'll quote, Before this year, winning a state championship was a stretch of my imagination. After that goal became reality, my natural tendency was to give myself credit for the win. However, the more I think about the experience, the more I understand that I deserve less and less credit. I realize I could have done absolutely nothing without the support of so many other people, and I want to take this opportunity to express my gratitude. Um, I don't know if you agree or disagree with me, but the way this kid interviews, you can tell he went to Harvard because he's super smart. But Harvard don't teach humility. If anything, Harvard breeds arrogance. This guy gives the best interviews possible. Not the, aw shucks, it ain't me, Tim Tebow stuff. And I'm not taking it away too much from Tebow because he has humility. But this kid is so pragmatically humble it blows me away. I, I, I mean, you couldn't write a better post-game interview than the things that this guy is saying. He says it as if he truly is convinced. He is committed to the fact that he is only as good as the guys that are around him. And if anyone could look at it and say, this is my day in the sun and I'm going to hog it and I'm going to sign a shoe deal or an abacus deal. I, sorry, I went and made an Asian joke. I'm sorry. The point is, he's incredibly humble and he's got me watching basketball. And I never watch basketball. All right, back to Lynn here. Third one, Lynn interned for a California state senator named Joe uh, Samishan, who said recently, and I quote, I picked up the paper and all of a sudden I'm reading that the guy who used to Xerox papers in my office scored 38 points against the Lakers. He was a relatively quiet kid, very polite. Boy, when you, when you say that, it sounds like, he's a, you know, like he just murdered three people. That's the line you usually hear. All right, well, he's a relatively quiet kid, very polite. Obviously, he was a bright kid with a lot of talent. And he shows up in my office and wants to answer telephones and do the Xeroxing. For anyone who ever had a dream, this is a great story. And that last sentence, Senator Samishan, uh, that, that's the one. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Before we, before we continue, our buddy Joe from Brookfield, who told me he was going to be in Philly, is on the line. So we're going to go to Joe from Brookfield or Joe from Philly, wherever the hell you are today. Joe, man, what's up? I am in Philly. I'm playing hurt today, Tony, but I had to keep the streak alive. All That's right, man. What, I read your email from before. We had a great time with it, man. What, what do you got for me? I mean, you're bouncing around. So the, the last thing you talked about, Lynn got me. I mean, I feel the exact same way about the NBA. It's If it goes away. But this is almost to the point where it's making me turn on a game. Um, the thing of all the angles that I, with, with this story, though, the one that it makes me think about, and, and I guess connecting with Tebow at some level, is the evaluation process. Oh, yeah. I don't know much about the NBA draft, but I know it's covered for, for months and months. And they miss on a guy like this. I, I wonder, we still haven't come up with that, that kind of that rubric to measure heart, to measure a guy that can come in and doesn't have all the ability in the world. But, I mean, if he's dominating the NBA, even for a week, you know, he's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. How did everyone miss on him? Well, you My know question. what? Somebody should call Billy Bean. And get that guy to start evaluating the basketball process because there is clearly a need to do something a little different. Or better yet, Joe, let's you and I grab a case of beer. Let's brainstorm a bit and we'll write a movie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're, you're right. This, you know, Listen, it's not like he was a schlub. I mean, he wasn't exactly unheralded at Harvard. This is actually one of the points. After his senior season, ESPN analyst uh, Fran Fraschilla said Lynn was one of the 12 most versatile players in college basketball. And, you know, I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know who else was another early believer in this guy? I don't know if you remember Gary Payton. He was a former NBA point guard. Uh, of he's from the glove. Yeah, exactly. Great defender. He happened to be from the Bay Area, and he followed Lynn throughout high school and college. And after doing a, a little bit of a workout with him, 
Peyton encouraged several, several NBA executives to give Lynn a shot. People think, and I didn't make, you know, I made the abacus joke and I apologize, but you know what? A lot of people think it's because guess what? If you, if you, if you've turned on a game, you know that Jeremy Lin doesn't look like your average NBA point guard. Matter of fact, he looks nothing like your average NBA point guard, does he now? No. I think, you know, I do have a hard time calling a guy that went to, that had a 4.2 at Harvard a Cinderella story, though. <laughs> I know a lot of people are getting on that. Well, you know, you know and I mean, by the way, is okay. now, Joe, check this out, because you know what? Somebody brought up a point, and I thought it was a good one. Some people think that they, uh, the Ivy League kids have a real strike against them in the draft, because you know what? Everyone knows that a, a professional sports career is fleeting. Your kid goes to Harvard and, let's say, turns down the fast track at Morgan Stanley to go play three games in the NBA, and you're his dad? I'm kicking that kid in the butt. And that's a legitimate <laughs> – that is a legitimate beef. It, it, it's one of those things that clearly comes up, man. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I just – I didn't want to go a Saturday without calling in. I've been loving the show, so uh... – even playing hurt with a little sore throat here in, in Philly, <laughs> we got we to gotta call in and keep it going. Joe, I tell you, when you get back, man, you're, you're really good on the show. I'm going to have you in studio when you get back. Listen, go enjoy your break, man. I appreciate you calling the show. Enjoy Vermont, all right? All right, man. Thanks. Hey, listen, that's awesome. All right, you know what? There's one other point, but I am not going to miss my opportunity to draw a comparison that no one else has yet. This past week, we lost two people. Uh, well, we lost a lot more. And by the way, don't think I, I'm, I, I'm ignoring uh, the amazing men and women who serve our country. Uh, all across the world who've lost their lives this week. And I think it's a crime we don't talk about them. But the two main people that got mentioned <clears throat> were, of course, Whitney Houston and um, and also um, Gary Carter. Here's a problem as, as far as I see it. Let's not compare them. I, I have literally not been able to pick up a magazine – Listen to a, a TV broadcast. I can't change my channel without seeing Whitney Houston. And, and, and here's the problem. It's troubling me. It's troubling me quite a bit, and I'm going to explain to you why. Gary Carter, one of the true icons in baseball, regarded highly as one of the best at his position during his era. One of the guys that, that clearly played the game the way you want your kid to play the game. This guy battled long and hard over brain tumors. And this past week, unfortunately, those brain tumors took away one of the shining lights of baseball. And that, and that is a crime. Now I'm just going to say it. I don't want to hear about anybody comparing these two people. The only reason I'm doing it is because on one hand, you have a, an iconic legend, a role model, someone who never embarrassed himself, his teammates, his coaches, his family, his towns, and his life was, was truly taken from him. And even towards the end, if you listen to some of these interviews, like Daryl Strawberry, who was on SportsCenter, you know, he said that he got a sense when Gary said, Gary Carter's words were, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I've lived an amazing life. Wouldn't trade it for anything. And guys like me, sappy old jerks, who get a lump in their throat hearing those things take place, and... You know what? I, I, it's, it's, it's passing. Gary Carter's passing is a literal one. We're not talking about that one enough. And then on the flip side, what do you got? You got somebody who came from privilege, established something for herself that privilege isn't even a strong enough word to even begin to describe what she had. And what does she do? She threw her life in the toilet. Gary Carter would probably have killed for all, and so would I and so would you. We would all kill for the years that this drug addict flushed down the toilet. You can play the music. I'll still go. Selfishly left her daughter without a mom. Whitney Houston, you're gone. Go. We're going to fly a flag at half-mast. Get a grip. Gary Carter, you're going to be sadly and sorely missed. You are a true hero for kids everywhere, including myself. All right, listen. I hate to end the show on a bummer. I'm heading to Vermont. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the week and the holiday week. Take it easy, everybody.